In a past video, I've shown you how I do all my content creation on the Android platform and how it's replaced my Windows computer. Another platform I've come to rely on for its ease of setup and better yet, ease of system recovery is Chrome OS Flex. I'll show you why I like using Chrome OS Flex next. I've been using Chrome OS for about 5 or 6 years and I've always installed it in its default configuration where the ability to install Linux apps is not activated. In this configuration, I'm restricted to using apps from the Chrome Web Store which are usually very small utility type apps or client front-end apps that access hosted systems. From my experience, these apps never take more than 30 seconds to install and to me, that's one of the nice conveniences of Chrome OS. Chrome OS doesn't have many CPU intensive apps available, which is probably fine since most Chromebooks or Chrome OS Flex conversions are usually pretty slow. Even with that, there's still a good selection of apps that will work well in Chrome OS. If you can't find a specific app, you can always navigate to the app's website. For myself, that would be sites like Twitch, Snapchat, Discord, and eBay. Having access to common products like Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, or other common services is nothing special. Any OS platform will have some way of accessing these services. There is one feature though that I've come to rely on in Chrome OS that I've not seen in other operating systems and it's the reason I use a Chrome OS computer as my work from home system. In the days of dumb terminals, which is what many computers before the early 80s were called, users logged into a computer terminal that had very little processing power of its own. The processing power and services available were completely dependent on the host system being logged into. Chrome OS's default configuration works in a similar way where its capabilities are dependent on the host systems it can access, which today we know as things like Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. In the past, when a user's dumb terminal failed for some reason, they could easily regain access to the system by either having their terminal replaced or simply jumping on another terminal and continuing to work. In a similar way, Chrome OS allows you to do the same thing. What I'm demonstrating now is the configuration of a new install of Chrome OS Flex on this laptop. No user data has been copied yet. This is a completely fresh install waiting for a user to log in, which is actually a part of this install being demonstrated. With my work from home credentials authenticated on this new install of Chrome OS Flex, my Chrome OS desktop is now restored to this new computer. This kind of recovery capability is great because there's no configuration to do at all. As mentioned, this is the default behavior of Chrome OS, but it does require planning. My work situation is simple because data is kept at my workplace, so recovery of the desktop is sufficient for a full recovery. If you're setting up a home system, keep in mind that your data, which includes letters, spreadsheets, photos, drawings, etc., should be kept on the service where they're edited. Never store them on the Chrome OS computer because the recovery system does not back up data files. Like I sort of mentioned in the title to this video, you have to be willing to work different from how you might be used to, but it's not hard to do. Chrome OS has found a place in education, but I think it can be of use in other environments as well. As Google adds features to Chrome OS, I'm hoping they don't try to turn it into yet another typical operating system. If that ever becomes their plan, what would be the sense of using it anymore? I hope I've been able to enlighten you on how Chrome OS works and how it can maybe make your computing life a bit easier and more budget friendly. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section down below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.